Hello friends, in this video we will see some more basics of ETABS. In the previous video we saw how to draw a continuous beam using the ordinates as an option for defining the grids. So in this video we will see how to use the spacing option in order to define the grids. For that we will model this truss in ETABS okay so uh, let me give you the spans that are not clear in this picture so uh, this first span is uh, 5 meters uh, the second span is uh, 4 meters this is also 4 meters and uh, let's keep this one as 5 meters okay so the height is uh, 3 meters right okay so uh, if this direction is your x direction then uh, this direction becomes your y direction and the upward direction is the z or you can see the g direction okay so uh, we got three three point loads so one is 10 kN the middle is 5 kN and the other one is also 10 kN let me tell you that uh, this tutorial is not for telling you how to design a truss so this tutorial is simply meant for giving further introduction of ETABS. So let us now model this truss. For that, you have to open a new model. Either you can go to file and click on new model or simply you have got an option over here. Just click on new model. After you have done that, use the third option use built-in settings with so here uh, the options are already available so display units we are using metric si that is the length is measured in meters and the force is measured in kilonewton if you want the length in feet then you have to use us customary or you can change the units that i'll show you in the later tutorials okay so steel section database is indian uh, it won't matter right now. So steel design code is IS 800-2007 and concrete design code is IS 456-2000. So after that, just click on OK. Uh, now here you see a dialog box that helps you to change the grid numbers and the spacing. So we are using custom grid spacing and specify the data for grid lines and we'll click on edit grid data. So grid system name you can change if you want in the previous video we used display grid data as ordinates option so in this video we will use display grid data as spacing once you click here you have to see how these numbers change so right now grid id a x coordinate is zero so uh, so we know what this means so uh, now we'll click on this option so the number changes to 888 eight, eight and 0. So I'll explain this. Uh, grid data as spacing means that if you see in the x direction, so we got grid line here, one grid line, and another grid line is here, another is here, and here. So the first grid is, is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D, right? So 8 meter means that this grid spacing is 8 meters. So you have to give 8 from a to b so from b to c if it is uh, 8 then you have to give 8 so in in our case it's not 8 it's actually 5 next grid spacing is 4 and again next grid spacing is 4 and d to e it's 5 and you have to give one more spacing for this grid that is e to e that you have to give 0 okay so let's do it So x grid is spacing from A to B is 5 meters, from B to C is 4 meters, from C to D it's 4 meters and from D to E it's 5 meters and let us define one more grid. So it's 5 meters and from E to E it's 0. So you have to put this 0 value at the end. Uh, so similarly Y grid data, we don't have any data in the Y grid. So what we'll do, we'll just select these three and we'll delete it and we will click on ok so after that we have to change the story data you can simply keep this data it won't matter how many story grid lines are presented over there as long as we have got sufficient grid lines it won't matter how many extra grid lines we have uh, for example uh, let me show you 
in the jet direction so we need a grid line so let me change the color we need one grid line for uh, this line right and we need another grid line at three meters for uh, this line okay and if we have got a grid line over here it doesn't matter right so we don't have to draw anything over here if this grid line doesn't exist then we cannot draw this line so we need to have sufficient grid lines extra grid lines even if we have it won't matter so uh, let us move on so a uh, number of stories uh, let's keep as uh, just one okay so we don't need extra grid lines but if you have it won't matter so typically story height is three meters and bottom story height it's uh, three meters so if you want to edit the story data you can just go to custom story data and click on edit story data so from here also so base is the baseline and story one is at three meters from the baseline okay and we click on okay and again we click on okay 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 so now uh this window over here shows the plan view and this window over here shows the 3d view so here in this window we will go to the elevation and uh, let us close this window so uh, click on elevation and we'll go to elevation one and click on okay okay so we want so uh so we so we went to the elevation in this window so again we'll click 3d here and we'll click on this window and go to elevation and click on one and click on okay so this line over here is your baseline and this line over here is your story one this is at zero meters and this is at three meters now what we do we will simply draw the truss for that we'll use this shortcut option quick draw beams columns and uh after that we'll just side this window and left click here again left click again left click again we'll left click so after that here also left click and again left click so after that uh, we'll use uh, draw beam column option again or you can use the draw menu if you want okay so uh, left click at this point over here so left click after that move your mouse and left click here okay again left click here right so as you have already got a beam over here now what you can do now what you can do you can just right click on your mouse so now we can freely draw anywhere we want so what we'll do we'll just left click here and after that left click here and again left click here right again we just right click so after that uh, left click here and left click here and left click here again right click so left click here and left click here and again right click now you can see that we have drawn our truss okay so okay so we'll just uh, close this window and hit escape to escape the command okay so if we see the support system uh, then you can see that so we don't have any support system right now okay so what we'll do is uh, let us uh, delete these things not from here okay so we'll just delete them and okay so uh the support system over here so we'll change the color okay let's use the green so uh let's do uh, let's put a hinge over here let's put a ruler over here and let's put uh okay so let's put a hinge over here also and let's just put a ruler over here okay so we'll use this support system so what do we do so we got hinge over here we got hinge over here we are fine so uh, we have to remove these two hinges so we'll select them select and again select this joint by left clicking and go to assign and after that click on joint so you don't have to click you just have to hover your mouse and after that go to restraints and over here click on this pin option and click on ok so both the supports have been removed and we have to apply the roller here so what we'll do we'll just select this joint and after that go to sign go to joint and click on restraints and after that we select the roller option and we click on ok 
all right so now we have applied the support system now we will apply load on this truss so we got 10 kilonewton load at this joint also 10 kilonewton load at this joint and 5 kilonewton load at this joint so it's like this joint and also select this joint and go to assign after that go to joint loads and click on force so the load pattern name is dead and loads that can be applied is in the x direction y direction or the z direction so the upward direction is the z direction and we're applying the load in the downward direction that is in the negative z direction okay so we are applying the load of 10 kilonewton as it is in the negative z direction we'll apply the sign of minus okay and 10 for 10 kilonewton and we click on apply so two loads of 10 kilonewton have been applied after that we select this joint by left clicking and over here force global z will apply the load of 5 kilonewton and we click on apply and we click on ok all right so after doing this much of work we analyze this structure so before analyzing the structure let us make the weight of these members as zero so for that what we do we go to define and we go to load patterns as i have already told you we'll see this load pattern option in detail in the coming lecture when we will model the building uh, so here a uh, load name is dead so it is just a name okay so name can be anything that you have to remember the type is the dead so it is a dead load type and we'll do the self weight multiplier as zero and after that what we do we click on modify load and we click on ok and after that we analyze our structure so either you can go to analyze and click on run analysis or you can simply click on this option over here so we click here and let us save the structure so we'll do this truss analysis so it is not a real truss analysis okay so let us just save it So you see the deformed shape in the 3d window you just click on this window over here after that go to display and click on deformed shape here the case is dead and just click on ok you see the deformed shape of the truss right if you want to animate the structure or the deformation click on start animation you can see how it deflects right so this is just the exaggerated view right okay so uh, stop the animation now after doing this much of work we will see the axial force diagram of this structure for that what we do we go to display force stress diagrams frame pyre spandrel link forces or simply click on this option over here after that click on axial force the case is dead and so we'll also check so values at controlling stations on diagram and click on ok you can see the actual load right so it's minus 7.1022 and similarly other forces as well and we know that if you want to check any specific member you can simply left click on that member and again right click you will get this window you can see the value of the axial load that is the tension and similarly uh, let's just do done <laughs> and yeah doing done uh, left click on this member and then right click you can see it's the compressive force right earlier it was the tension force it is the compressive force okay all right so we know what these other things do and uh, let us see uh, what happens if we do the moment diagram click on this option and click on moment to do and after that oh sorry not moment to do moment three three so before that uh, let us see the shear and click on ok these values are very less 0 0.554 okay so 
0.0754 they are very much low similarly if we see the moment click on moment m3 moment 33 and click on ok the values are not very much almost negligible so this is how you define the grids using the spacing so now that we have got some basic idea of e tabs and some familiarity with the e tabs we will now model our building and we'll apply the loads and we'll do the design works so those lectures are the core lectures of this course hope you will enjoy those lectures and you'll find something knowledgeable out of it